Just because somebody is giving you money doesn't mean they want your best interest. Christians United for Israel was founded in February of 2006 in San Antonio, Texas with 400 of America's foremost evangelical leaders. Christians United for Israel is now the largest pro-Israel organization in America with 3.5 million members from every state in the Union. Our objectives are to be bold and relentless defenders of Israel and the Jewish people. Our objective is to combat anti-Semitism in every word and deed. Just like Esav Soneli Yaakov in Alakha, it says that Esav hates Yaakov. Esav hates Yaakov. What does it mean Esav hates Yaakov? There's a bunch of Christians in Texas that are uh, the biggest donors in the world to Eretz Yisrael. More than the Jewish community. There are over 70 million evangelical Christians in the United States. Over 70 million. Talking about uh, almost 30% of the population of America. 25%. Over 70 million evangelical Christians. Many of them are in Texas, and the ones in Texas specifically fund multi-million dollar projects in Eretz They call themselves um, Christian Zionists. Christian Zionists. And you see them in the, uh, associated constantly with Donald Trump, and you see them constantly associated with, uh, you know, different political figures in, uh, in Israel, Bibi Netanyahu, and the rest of the clowns. It's my honor to welcome my dear friend, the ninth and current Prime Minister of the State of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, to our gathering. Dr. Hagee, I want to thank you for your enduring, tremendous support. For decades, You've been leading the effort to strengthen support for Israel within the Christian community. And I remember when you began, once you were one of a handful of brave voices in the wilderness. But thanks to your leadership, now there are millions and millions of devout Christians who stand with Israel. So I want to thank you on behalf of all the people of Israel, and I want to thank the thousands of you who've come to Washington from across America to stand with Israel. People are like, wow, look at these Christians. No, this is not like Roman times. They're good to us. Look how much money they're putting into Eretz Israel. Look how much money they're putting into it, even more than the Jews. It's not an insult to the Jews. It's a reality. It's a reality that they donate more money than the Jews do. comes to numbers, I mean, there's 14 million, 15 million Jews in the entire world. So 70 million just in the United States evangelical Christians, I mean, uh, you do the math. And not all of the uh, Jews that are around the world actually like to support Israel. Unfortunately, some large part of them in the United States are anti-Israel, lefty, liberal, anti-Israel, pro-Palestine. The Facebook clown. He promotes uh, Hamas and Palestine and all that stuff on his uh, Facebook. But you have you, one thing about Israel, your, your, your page uh, is wiped out. You have, go on Facebook, if you ever have like nothing to do for like two minutes, you'll see a enormous amount of pages against Eretz Israel. But I'm not talking about like, oh, we hate Israel. No, no, no. Like Hamas, ISIS, uh, you know, uh, Pages that talk about how the goal of the, of, of the uh, Palestinians is to throw all the Jews into the ocean. They have a whole uh, chant. They have a whole chant of how, uh, you know, uh, they're going to throw all the Jews into the ocean. Like these, like violent, Muslim, anti-Jewish pages all over Facebook. from here until your face turns green 
Facebook says no. They don't violate our policies. They don't violate our policies. But you have one tiny little page that says, oh, the Palestinians are uh, terrorists. Oh, the Arabs uh, that, uh, you know, they just killed a bunch of Jews. They're terrorists. They're this, they're this. They'll shut down your account. You're racist. You're this. You say, oh, this uh, homosexuality is against the Torah. Done. Finished. Banned from Facebook. Banned from Facebook. Why? Because the leadership is what it is. Lefty liberal. We still use whatever tools we can use in order to benefit the public. But we can't uh, deny the truth. The reality is not all Jews are exactly uh, have their heads screwed on. So if you live next to Zuckerberg, I wouldn't necessarily say you should become friends with him. Why? It's not exactly uh, the model Jew you want to be uh, friends with. So, a person needs to know that just because a place has an orthodox shul, it doesn't mean that you're allowed to live there. Just because there are Jews doesn't mean that you're allowed to live there. The person I'm about to talk to you about has been to our community and spoke. She's appeared on our podcast behind the Bima. And to hear a mother's heartfelt pleas who wants closure, who wants to grieve. Stay away from evangelicals. They endanger Israel because they only care for their own extremist agenda. God bless you all. Rabbi Goldberg, Boca Raton Synagogue, friends that are joining today, it is truly an honor to be here. I want to thank Rabbi Goldberg and the synagogue for your incredible hospitality. And the Lord spoke to us, God is pouring out his glory upon the church to provoke the Jewish people to jealousy. messianic church is over it's time for the church of jesus to arise just because somebody is giving you money doesn't mean they want your best interest like for example i saw a short documentary that uh talked about why are the evangelical christians in the united states and around the world especially the united states why do they support Israel so much? And they talk about a couple of main figures within the evangelical Christian world of the United States, of how they have constant trips to Israel and, you know, raise tens of millions of dollars. At some point along this uh, documentary, they tell you what's their pitch. What's their pitch? Their pitch is that this is where Gogo Magogo is going to happen. Armageddon is going to happen. They call it Armageddon. Torah calls it Gogo Magog. You know, they always call stuff different names because they have a false testament. But anyway, they call it Armageddon. And uh, they say it's going to happen at a specific place where they go visit. And uh, all of the born again idol worshippers are going to be saved. Everything's going to be good. But this land is, uh, is the Jewish land. But then at some point, I think they. I don't know, maybe they didn't think anybody was going to actually pay attention. At some point, I tell you, oh, by the way, you know that two-thirds of the Jews are going to die. Only a few thousand of them are actually going to survive. So why do you support them? Why do you love them so much? You're telling, you're telling them they're all going to die. Why do they say this? Because it's in their book. That's why anyone that doesn't agree with the halacha, that Esav Sonele Yaakov, is simply someone that doesn't understand what he's dealing with. The New Testament itself says that only 144,000 Jews are going to survive at the end. Which means 99% according to the Christians are going to die. So, this is their belief. Just like we believe, talking from Mount Sinai, this is what they believe. So, why do they go to Eretz Yisrael? Because they're trying to convert all of them to Christianity. They're trying to convert all of them to Christianity because they believe with their full hearts that they're going to save them. 
Same thing with the Christians, whether, regardless of whether it's evangelical ones or the uh, Catholics, uh, whatever other types of uh, styles and sizes they have, it's all the same. The number one mission is to convert Jews to Christianity. So only a fool or a blind person that's deaf and stupid too would believe that the any believer in the New Testament is your friend, actually wants your best interest. But unfortunately today we live in such a politically correct world that you see many times certain types of people that are supposed to run away from the Christian church and the Catholic church actually befriend it. Unfortunately, some of those people are considered Orthodox Jews, Orthodox organizations, Orthodox leaders. There's a group of a uh, or supposedly Orthodox rabbis. I mean, they're as reform as can be, but they call themselves Orthodox at least. At least they call themselves enough times to fool everybody else to think that they are. And uh, they signed a coalition with the Christians. Avinu <laughs> Shabashamayim. Father in heaven, we come to you tonight, tonight in prayer and thanks. As I look around, I pray that after so many years, 40 plus years of night under Israel, that I don't take for granted this miracle, but especially for the night, K-N-I-G-H-T, the knights who honor Israel, Pastor and Diana Hagee who started this miraculous revolution. I thank you for the organization they created, Christians United for Israel, which counts over 11 million members in its ranks, almost as many Jews that there are in the world. And there are many Christian Jewish organizations, which in reality is Christianity in disguise. And there's almost no major Zionistic Jewish organization, whether it be APAC or Jewish Federation, that is not funded, if not predominantly, at least a large part of, by the Christian church. But most people love money so much, they forget that they're only giving you the money because it's a bribe. For what? So they convert you at some point. It's an entry so they can talk to a bunch of Jews. But people don't see clearly, and unfortunately, that's why we have a half a million Jews have converted to Christianity over the last 20 years, 30 years, according to Jews for Judaism. Now, half a million, if, if you said a half a million Christians converted to Judaism over the last 30 years, that's like, oh, wow, chazak good for you. No one really cares. The Christians are not worried about that. Why? There's billions of them. A half a million is not even a rounding error. But when you say a half a million Jews converted to Christianity over the last 25 to 30 years, you're talking about 3% of the Jewish population. It's a significant amount. You're continuing this route, Shem 30 years ago, there were 3,000 Christians in Eretz Yisrael. Today, this missionary organization, One for Israel, Yimach Shimam, reported as over 30,000. So the numbers are staggering and they're against us, but why is this happening? There are two reasons. Number one, we, are, we live in a generation of ignorance. People simply do not know anything. They don't know anything about their own heritage. They don't know anything about the Torah itself. They know more about Min Hagim, the, the customs, than they knew, know about Alakha. That's why the Baalei Musar said that if Shabbat was a Minhag, everybody would keep it. <laughs>